everybody, this is Mr. Potter. In our previous video, we were introduced the concept of the Magpie, the chatbot, uh, which is one of the concepts that's being tested on for the AP. And of course, the main thing that we're looking at are the string methods. We talked about a lot of different string methods uh, back in a previous video. Uh, the main one that we had been using for the second activity was the index of method. And the purpose of the index of method basically tells us if a particular statement contains a phrase. So if I see NO, or if I see NOT, or if I see N apostrophe T, if any of these have an index of that's greater than or equal to zero, then we went to this response that said, why so negative? And the idea is that if this never showed up in the phrase, then I would get an index of negative one. And I'm using the logical or that we talked about because I, I just want one of these things to be true. Remember that as soon as one of these things end up being true, we're going to short circuit through this. We're going to ignore the rest of the statements. We're going to jump immediately to the meat of our if statement and assign our response variable. So that's what we were doing in our previous lesson. And of course, we talked about this idea, if I wanted to add more recognition statements, all I needed to do is add another else if. And I could take this and say statement.index of cat, statement of index of dog, statement.index of hamster. If any of these were greater than or equal to zero, I could say tell me more about your pet. And so what we need to do is we need to have some more simple way of kind of running through this mechanism, this idea that I want to be able to run through these phrases, and that's really what we're headed with for the magpie 3. Because the string class actually has quite a few other methods. Now one of the things that we talked about in our previous video was this notion of the no. And originally the string was just looking for a no, and if that no was embedded in a word like I know or I throw snowballs, then it said, hey, that's a negative statement. Why so negative? And so we came up with a rather crude way and just saying, you know, what if I buffered it with spaces ahead of it or behind it? The, of course, the issue with that is if the first word of the sentence is no, then we're going to miss that. And also, we're going to run into the issue of, well, what if they type in capital N, lowercase no? Or what if they're really mad and they're like, no, and they're typing in capital N and capital O? Our response that we've got set up here is only searching for a lowercase n followed by a lowercase o, and we're going to miss that clue. So there's a couple of things that we're going to be talking about with this magpie 3 class. The first thing is this notion that I can take a phrase and convert it completely to lowercase. To lowercase was one of the methods that we talked about when we were originally dealing with strings. The idea that I can take an entire string and turn every alphabetical character to its lowercase equivalent. And if I assign a phrase that lowercase method, then what that does is that basically changes everything to its lowercase equivalent. So I'm going to go to String Explorer. This is one of the files that's in the Activity 3 folder. And we can see some things here. I see the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That's our sample string. And uh, we're doing a couple of things here. The index of that we talked about, I'm looking for quick. Quick should show up in position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Should show up in position 4. And then I'm assigning lowercase string to get the result of sample dot to lowercase. Remember that strings are immutable, so the string methods don't actually change the string itself. They return a string and I have to assign it. So sample doesn't actually change. What happens is lowercase becomes a new string that contains all lowercase variables of this. So if I go ahead and run this program, then I'm going to see, here's my general output, says sample.index of quick is equal to four, like we said. I see sample dot to lowercase equals the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Notice that the T in the which originally was capitalized in my sample, is now lowercase. But when I run that method, it doesn't change sample. Sample still contains a capitalized T in it. As a matter of fact, I can capitalize all the words in this. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I can capitalize all of these words. 
and when I run the program then what I find is that even though the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog every word is capitalized the to lowercase version of it is all lowercase and so this idea of using uh, to lowercase as a method is going to make it much easier for me to deal with it. I can use this to compare the difference between no lowercase or no capitalized and no all caps. All I have to do is just make sure before I even start dealing with my string I convert it to its lowercase form. And we see that happening here, phrase dot to lowercase. And then we take this string that we've created and we run index of on it. So this is going to find the location of something, but this is a different version of index of. Notice that I've got something else here, comma, start position. And so I want to go back to the string explorer, and I want to try another method out here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, int val equals, and I'm going to take sample dot index of, um, and I want to find the occurrences of the letter O, comma, zero. And I'm going to explain what this comma zero is going to do in just a moment. And I'm going to system.out.println uh, val. So when I run this, it's going to look through my string, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and it's going to look for lowercase letter O's. And so I find the first place that it sees it is in character 12. So I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's my O. If I change this to a 1, it's going to find the next index of after that position. So in other words, it should find this next O. And I can keep doing that, running it with a 2, No, it keeps giving me the 12 here. That's interesting. So the start position basically tells me where I'm starting at. So if I go back to String Explorer and I say start at position 13, after position 13, which is this W, where's the next O that I see? 14, 15, 16, 17. And then I can go starting at position 18, running it again, so after this x, what's the next lowercase o that I see? It's way over here at position 42, the o for dog. And if I bump this up to 43, then I'm going to look for any lowercase o's after g, and there aren't any. So I get the typical negative one that tells me, hey, something happened. So this other version of index of, not just looking for a string, but looking for a string starting at a particular position, is what's really going to help us here because we're now going to be able to <coughs> excuse me we're not just looking for the first occurrence of one of our keywords but we're look, going to be able to talk about our keywords in relation to each other and that's what's really going to be important here so I'm going to pop back to this magpie3.java program and what I'm doing is I'm looking at my phrase this is some phrase that I've been done here I'm going to do dot to lowercase, and this converts the entire phrase to lowercase. I'm going to check the index of a particular goal, which I've also changed to lowercase. So now it doesn't matter if my original statement is all lowercase, or the phrase that I'm trying to match is lowercase. Both of these are going to be converted to pure lowercase, starting at a particular position. Now one thing I haven't really talked about is the statement.trim. The idea behind statement.trim is that it takes care of all the white space immediately before or immediately after my phrase. So anything at the beginning or at the end that really isn't an alpha numerical character, that isn't a punctuation character, that isn't something other than white space, is going to be gone. And we talked a little bit about the trim method when we were talking about our string methods. Trim's not something that we see on the AP exam per se, but it certainly is a useful method here. So the idea here is that we're going to prepare our statement, the sentence that the user types in, by getting rid of all the white space at the beginning and getting rid of all the white space at the end. Calling that phrase, and then looking at its to lowercase version and comparing it to what we're trying to find and looking at the start position. 
And this value that I get, which is going to be the first occurrence of the phrase after start position, I'm going to call PSN. And then we've got a little bit here. While PSN is greater than zero, I want to find the string before or the string after. In other words, one character before and one character after. So I'm starting off saying string before is equal to an empty quote with a, with a space in it. String after is an empty space with a, a thing after it. And what I want to do is I want to check the space before. Now, of course, if I'm starting off with a no, then n is my first character. n is at position 0. So if what I'm looking for is at position 0, I don't need to check before it. But if it's not, if my PSN starts after position 0, then I can look at what happens immediately before it using the, the substring method. So I'm taking the substring method. Remember, the length of my substring is the difference in these indices. So I'm going from PSN minus 1 to PSN. In other words, the position before where the string was found to the position where the string was found. I'm taking that, converting it to lowercase, and assigning it to before. Now, if I don't hit that spot, in other words, if the place that I'm looking at is position 0, it's going to give me the space that I already started off with. But it will change to whatever's immediately before using the substring. And we'll check to see, hey, if we're too far past the end, in other words, if the position I'm at plus the goal dot length, in other words, the length of what I'm searching for, as long as that's within the length of my phrase, then I can do another substring and convert it to lowercase. Again, I'm going from the end of where my phrase is to one position over. And I can check to see if anything before my phrase or anything after my phrase is a space. Of course, if it would be out of bounds, my default assignments are spaces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if anything before, I'm going to compare it with an A, and if it comes less than zero, I mean less than A. So in other words, if it comes before lowercase a in the alphabet, then it can't be a letter, because A is the first letter in the alphabet. If it comes after lowercase z, then it has to be the last letter in the alphabet. And so what's, what I'm doing is I'm essentially making sure that the spot before and the spot after are spaces, either by assigning it if it's at the first position in the word or the last position in the word, or just um, searching those using the substring method. And if that's true, then I'm going to find it. If that's not it, then I need to find the next place, so I start at position plus one. And this is what we did back in our string explorer. I looked in position zero, the first position zero that I had, Starting at position 0, the first time I saw a lowercase letter O was at position 12 with the brown. So if I'm looking for the next one, I go one more. I look at 13. And starting at this W in brown, the next O is the O in fox. If I bump that up to 18, and I run it again, the next O after the X in fox is the O in dog at position 42. So I can keep going through this because I am in a while loop as long as PSN is greater than 0. And I'm going to go ahead and say PSN is equal to the phrase.index of goal dot to lowercase starting at the next position. Now, if what I'm looking for is surrounded by spaces, I'm going to return that value. If what I'm looking for is not, then I'm going to return negative 1. And so this is my way of getting around this, you know, do I, am I starting a sentence with no? Or is the last thing in my sentence a no? And this takes care of decimal places, or periods as well, because a period has an ASCII code that's less than lowercase a. As a matter of fact, any punctuation, uh, period, question mark, exclamation point, semicolon, all of those are going to have punctuation Unicode values that are less than the 97 that comes from a lowercase a. So this is a very clever way of getting around that, making sure that I'm not embedded in a word, I'm in the real space. In other words, I'm using a space to delimit it, or I'm using period, punctuation, question mark, quotation marks, what have you. So that's what this method does, and I've called this method find keyword. And it has three parameters. It has the statement that I'm searching. 
it has the goal word or phrase that I'm looking for and a start position which is most likely going to be zero but later on we'll see how I can use it to be a position after a particular spot in the sentence. So if I were to run this method, let me go ahead and copy this method down here and I'm going to paste it into my string explorer. So I'm going to copy this I'm going to paste it in the String Explorer down here. This is going to be after my main method, and I want to call on this with some things. So if I have a string uh, sentence equals I know how to throw snowballs at Noah. And my string phrase is equal to no and I want to start at position 0 then I can say int place is equal to find keyword using my sentence with my phrase no starting at position 0 and I can system.out.println place. And of course for our previous program no would have been triggered here for I know how to throw snowballs. No would have been triggered at the no in snowballs. And if I'm using the to lowercase no should have been triggered for the no in Noah. And so I get the why so negative response that we were talking about before. But using this find, this find keyword method now if I run this there is no place let me go ahead and actually run this correctly because, you know, closing braces is a nice thing to do. If I run this again, oh, it's one of those days, isn't it? What's my error? Um, cannot be referenced from a static context, so I need to make this a static method. So notice that no, the word no, doesn't appear anywhere in the sentence, I know how to throw snowballs at Noah, even though the letter N followed by the letter O shows up three times in this statement. Now, if I say, no way did I throw snowballs at Noah, and I run it again, now it sees that no as an actual negative no, and I get the zero that I'm expecting. I didn't throw snowballs at Noah. No. And so now it's seeing this punctuation as something that's not an A through Z letter. It sees the space immediately in front of the no as a space. And so I'm looking at this and it tells me character 34. So let's see there. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4. Starting at position 34, here's our no. So this find keyword method that we've got here seems to really do the trick. And so what's going to be helpful for us to do is to take the phrases that we originally had in our magpie, how we dealt with no, how we dealt with not, how we dealt with in apostrophe t. Those are all negative phrases. I really need to deal with those as find keyword methods. So if find keyword statement no is greater than or equal to zero, or find keyword statement not is greater than or equal to zero or find keyword well actually for for the in apostrophe t I don't want that for the in apostrophe t I actually want to see if the index of so I want to see statement dot index of in apostrophe t is greater than or equal to zero. So it's going to take some understanding of how to kind of maneuver around this. Some of the situations I definitely want a space before or after, such as the word no, such as the word not. 
And in our Magpie 2, that's how we dealt with that. But some of these situations, I'm just looking for the occurrence of n apostrophe t. And so I want n apostrophe t, but there most definitely are letters in front of the n apostrophe t, such as don't, can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, didn't. All of those have a letter immediately in front of the n apostrophe t. So we really need to deal with those using our traditional index of. And as a good programmer, you're going to have to be able to recognize these situations where you're going to want to use this, uh, this uh, new shiny tool that we've built, or if you want to use something that's the old standby. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take magpie 3, but we want to add all of those phrases that we had. So like here when we were talking about our pet, those are things that we're going to want to kind of include in here using the find keyword method rather than just using index of because the find keyword is so much more powerful. Now where we're headed is this. Right now this chatbot is still kind of naive. It's still very simple. It's only looking for keywords. But what would be really nice is if we were able to make it say, you know, what if I were to type in, I like cats or I like France then it could ask me more about what I just said. So in other words, if it saw I like, it's going, aha, there's something we can talk about. Or if I say I hate math or I hate rutabagas, then it can go through that and say, aha, there's something that they may want to get off their chest, uh, talk a little bit more about. And so our chatbot can use these key phrases like I like or I love or I hate and use them as jumping off points for conversation. That's actually where we're headed for in Activity 4. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.